Good day. We're here. We're back again with another Bible study. May you be blessed with information and gain wisdom from God Almighty. I'm Adrian Howard from Transformation AME Zion Church, located in Dover, Delaware, 702 Maple Parkway, where the pastor is the Reverend Dr. R.J. Chandler Sr. So, today we're continuing our study based on the book of The Emotionally Healthy Church by Peter Scazzaro. And uh, you can pick that book up and read it or you can get it on Audible, you know, and listen to it. That's how I listen to it. And um, we're talking about the state of the church and, and its emotional health. So, um, today is a Bible study uh, in association with that, you know. Um, when I was first uh, thinking about this book and um, wrapping my mind around it, God had showed me a verse. I was like, well, what would I talk about? Where would I talk from it from? And, um, and he showed me this verse in Ezekiel. And in Ezekiel uh, chapter 11 is where he directed me. To, and I opened the Bible and it was right there. All right? Um, so chapter 11 is a, is a good starting point to think about what happened in history. About, well, Ezekiel was like 600 years before Jesus Christ. So you get the time period. Um, that's in his time. And this was at a time when, um, when the people of Israel were getting uh, deported out of Israel and being sent to Babylon. Um, and they were going through a crisis. Ezekiel lived in a time when it was the greatest crisis known in Israel. All right? In the land of Israel, the Israelites went through it. Um, because uh, this is their land and they were being uh, taken away from it. Um, the temple was destroyed. Everything. He lived through it. The temple being destroyed, he lived through uh, people being deported, the walls being burnt, everything. Um, so there's um, he he understands about being emotionally healthy, and um, and I would say when he was doing his prophecies or he's gaining his visions, he was at a state um, of being emotionally healthy. And so, it's good to see that. He had a, his contemporary was Jeremiah, in fact. And Jeremiah, I would think, is probably somewhere about 30 years older than him. But Jeremiah went through the same time period, except Jeremiah, for the most part, stayed in, in the land of Israel. Um, there's a few times he had to go and he kind of went to Egypt and, you know, Jeremiah traveled. But... He, he wasn't a captive like that, all right? He, you know, he, he moved around. Some would say he escaped at some points, you know, things like that. But um, Ezekiel actually was a captive. So in the first uh, deportation, there, there was like um, three stages of when Babylon came and invaded the land of Judea, Jerusalem, and you know, in Judah, you know, so forth. So, 
the first stage he took Daniel so we you know those of you who knew uh, the story of Daniel you can always go to the book of Daniel and you can read about Daniel it's a phenomenal book uh, one that I love you can always find Christ in that as well um, especially when you're looking around like chapter 7 12 you know things like that um, it's uh it's very very important that um the second deportation uh was ezekiel and the people that went with ezekiel now each time they took about ten thousand captives so um so at this point in time when ezekiel now is a captive in babylon um there's probably like twenty thousand people that was rounded up and taken and then there's a third one, the final one, uh, which Ezekiel prophesied about, and also Jeremiah was warning about, and so many other people. And um, that was the third one. That's when they really burnt the, the walls and the lands, and um, um, and they burnt the temple and, and so forth. And you know, they destroyed everything. Um, before they had just took some things out of the temple, you know, during the other. You know other invasions so 605 was the first one and 598 was the second one um, and that's 598 597 is around the time that Ezekiel was called about 30 when he was about 30 years old and then the last one was like 586 so you know generally speaking roughly about 600 years um, before Christ so that's just the backdrop that you you would want to know understanding where Ezekiel was at what he witnessed but he still stayed true to God no matter what and it's beautiful um, they were going through times you know there was a time when Hezekiah was the king and, um, and Isaiah was the prophet who would go and talk to him that was around you know 700 BC maybe like a hundred years earlier and then Hezekiah had children that weren't good, um, like Manasseh and Ammon. And, um, and then eventually Josiah came. And Josiah started turning things back the way that they should be, at least for a temporary time, where Israel was spiraling down because they were worshiping other idols. So it's just important to know that at this time um, when Josiah became king Hilkiah who was Jeremiah's father found this book in the walls and gave it to someone and the other person gave it to the king and read it to the king and that we think or some scholars think that is uh, Deuteronomy was the book of the law so most people conclude it's Deuteronomy that he found um, and he read it to to the king and then the king said he has to do something about it and get back into the law of Moses and you know he made things happen the way it's supposed to be and praise be to God that somebody would do the right thing and then um, so that you know God promised him he wouldn't destroy it, the land at his time but they still were going to get destroyed because after he died uh, his children became king and they started doing the wrong thing and sure enough, God let these other uh, people come in and invade the land. And, um, you know, they took the different ones of his sons and put them on the throne. And some they captured and, you know, others they burned their eyes out, you know. Um, you know, so they went through different kings. Now, you, it's beautiful in this story that you can find Ezekiel and you can go and match it up with Jeremiah you can match it up with um, 2nd Kings you can match it up with uh, Chronicles 2nd Chronicles um, even Ezra and Nehemiah play a factor in this um, when they're going back to Israel uh, from the captivity so all these books correspond with one another so 
uh, definitely check out Second Kings, I would say. Um, chapter 22 and 23, you can see things about Josiah and his sons going forward. Um, you know, Jeremiah, you can check in the, the late 30s, 38, 39, 40, you know, and go forward and you can start piecing some of the things together if, just for your extra study. Um, always read Ezra and, uh, and Nehemiah and, you know, you'll get the picture. You'll get a whole complete picture. So this is Ezekiel from the captivity side when he was already a captive and God came to him anyway. And there was a thing going on, just, just so you know. Um, there was this thing where after Ezekiel was deported, the, the, the people who were left in Israel, they, you know, some of the leaders that was left um, in charge, they started feeling themselves, you know, being a little conceited and thinking that they were safe. And so they started looking at, you know, turning their nose up at the people who were captives. And they started saying, well, well, they're captive, so that means God wants them far away from, from the land. They're out and we're safe. Our walls are still here, we're protected. We're safe. And, um, and yet they were doing evil. So they were like men of nobility, you know? They probably were sons of certain priests and royalty and so forth. But they, you know, they, they started devising evil stuff and they were killing um, the folks uh, in, in, in Israel and leaving them bodies in the streets and so forth. And God had something to say about it, you know? So uh, let me get to some reading. Um, And um, we're going to read Ezekiel chapter 11. I'm reading from the New King James Version. All right. This is chapter 11. I'm going to read from verses 1 to 12 right now. All right. So it says, Then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the east gate of the Lord's house, which faces eastward. And there at the door of the gate were 25 men, among whom I saw Jazamiah, the son of Azur, and Pelatiah, the son of Benaiah, princes of the people. So these are the princes or noble men, sons of noble men, all right? at this point so it's 25 of them that god has showed him the vision the picture of it you know of who was doing something wrong um it's beautiful where it starts the spirit lifted me up so here we see that the holy spirit can lift you up and you can see a vision you can see things clearly because the holy spirit is a leader it will lead you and teach you that's just something beautiful for you to know all right so here it says and he said to me son of man there are the uh, these are the men who devised iniquity and gave wicked counsel in this city who say the time is not near to build houses the, this city is the cauldron and we are the meat that means the cauldron is like a big pot and um, and they're the meat. They're safe inside this pot. Nothing's going to happen to it, um, to the meat. So they were they felt like they were protected, right? So it says, therefore prophesy against them. Prophecy, O son of man. Then the spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said to me, Speak. Thus says the Lord. Thus you have said, O house of Israel. For I know the things that come into your mind. This is God talking, saying, I know the things that come into your mind. O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind. Woo! You have multiplied your slain in this city, and you have filled its streets with the slain. Therefore, thus say the Lord God, your slain whom you have laid in its midst, they are the meat, and the 
this city is the cauldron but I say but but I shall bring you out of the midst of it you have feared the sword and I will bring a sword upon you says the Lord God and I will bring you out of its midst and deliver you into the hands of strangers and execute judgments on you you shall fall by the sword I will judge you at the border of Israel then you shall know that I am the Lord this city shall not be your cauldron nor shall you be the meat in its midst I will judge you at the border of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord for you have not walked in my statue nor executed my judgment but have done according to the customs of the Gentiles which are all around you now see God came to them and let them know um, through Ezekiel and this prophecy that he must say that I know what's in your mind I know what's in your heart you think you're safe but you're not safe you've done all these things you went against my covenants you know what I told you at Mount Sinai you know what I told you since Abraham chapter 12 verses 1 through 3 my covenant chapter uh, that's Genesis chapter 12 1 through 3 and also in Genesis chapter 15 13 through 16 you know about my covenant you know about my covenant with David in 2 Samuel you know about my covenant and yet you still break them are you crazy this judgment is going to be upon you I'm going to pull you out of your so called cauldron cauldron and I'm going to put you on that borderline and I'm going to take you outside of your comfort zone they thought they was emotionally healthy until the day came now I want you to think about this beloved people when you look at the people that were being captive and taken away and deported originally Daniel Ezekiel while all this is going down what God was really doing is he was saving them ah that's the beautiful thing and many people don't capture that he was saving them he knew what he was going to do praise be to God he knew what was going to happen so he got the people who he was going to save out of the situation beforehand and that's the kind of God we serve his ways are not our ways and our thinking is not his thinking on many levels until we line up with him and that means you got to trust the Lord God chapter 11 tell you about these bad people in the beginning but then he gets to the good people in the end and I want you to know that we're going through hard times and you may be going through hard times in your mind in your heart you may be going through hard times at home you may be going through hard times in your church inside this your body is the temple this is the temple your mind your heart where the spirit dwells inside of you that is the church you are individual church by yourself and then when you fellowship with your fellow man and woman you are you become part of the universal church praise God just know you might be going through something in your community in your state in your nation your country around the world you might be going through something but trust in the Lord your God the king of the universe have that relationship with him and you will never have to work oh God has brought me a mighty long way he's gonna bring you a long way too 
keep turning to him. Ah, right, so when we get to Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 13 through 25, listen to how beautiful this is. What God says to Ezekiel. First, he told him about the people who was plotting bad things and what he's going to do to them. Then he's going to tell about their situation that's already there. Now, Ezekiel was concerned when he heard that one of the 25 men who was dividing, devising plots and plans that he had died while he's following, obeying God to prophesy about the situation. He heard that he died, so that means God got right to it, got busy. He, he, he had to go to God and ask him. He said, now it, now it happened. While I was prophesying that Pelatiah, the son of Benaniah, died. Then I fell on my face and I cried with a loud voice and said, Oh, Lord God, will you make a complete end of the remnant of Israel? Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, your brethren, your relatives, your countrymen, and all the house of Israel in its entirety are those about whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said. These are the people, the bad guys have said, get far away from the Lord. This land has been given to us as a possession. All right. Therefore, say, thus says the Lord, God, although I have cast them far off among the Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet I shall be a little sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. Woo! A little sanctuary for them. Therefore say, thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the peoples, assemble you from the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of I will give you the land of Israel and they will go there and they will take away the detestable things and all its abominations and all its abominations from there then I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within them and take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statues and keep my judgments and do them and they shall be my people and I shall be their God but as for those whose hearts follow and the, the desires for the detestable things and their abominations I will recompense their deeds on their own heads says the Lord God. So, the cherubim lifted up their wings, that's angels, um, with the wheels beside them, that's like chariots, and the glory, glory means weight or significance, and the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood on the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. Then the Spirit took me up and brought me in, in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea to those in captivity. And then the vision of, and the vision that I had seen went up from me. So I spoke to those in captivity of all the things the Lord had shown. Me. So the Holy Spirit took him as he was speaking to him and telling him everything that they had to say. Uh, God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, everything to go say to uh, the people who were doing the wrong thing and say to the people in the captivity. His spirit lifted off of him, the angels went and left, they went to the east side. Now if you know anything about the east side, the east side is always like where Adam fell he had to go to the east of the garden when Cain did what he did which was wrong against Abel he had to go to the east of the garden the east gate where these men were devising things this evil stuff so the spirit went up 
to go make sure that this stuff is going to happen on the east side and uh, showed Ezekiel what he had to do and where he had to go and the people he had to go talk to. So after he had the vision, he went and go talk to the people in Babylon about what's going to happen. That God's going to restore them, that God has not forgotten about them, that they can be emotionally healthy, that it's going to be all right. You are the ones that we save. I know. I put you in a safe place. I'm your little sanctuary no matter where you go. So praise God for it. And blessed be you. Ezekiel chapter 11. You'll get through these times. Be blessed.